guys, how's it going? My name is Professor Jennifer Hill and I run Divide and Conquer Math, which is a website and YouTube channel dedicated to helping you learn math on your terms. So in this video, I want to talk about two pretty underrated tips that I think can make you a much stronger student in a math class. I think this is a great video to watch if you are at the beginning of the semester or maybe you're starting to feel like you're dragging a little bit in a math class and you're not sure what to do, or if you're in an online class that doesn't have like a formal meeting time and just works with videos. So oftentimes students think that being good at math is like one of those things that you're born with, you're either good at it or you're not. And the reality is that it's just not true. So I've been teaching for over 10 years and I have seen a lot of strong students and I've noticed that most of them just have certain habits. So the point of this is to really share with you just two of those habits that I think are very easy to get started and just to see what kind of impact that has on you and your experience in a class and maybe these will really help you with getting a deeper understanding of math. Okay, so tip number one is level up your note taking and organizing your homework. So this tip is very basic, but it really gets at the crux of a big problem I notice that students have when they're either in lecture, really bored, or if you're studying at home and now you don't have all these people around you and you're missing that in-person experience. So think about this situation for a second. I'm sitting in class and I'm just kind of, uh, and then I get on my phone and I'm looking at social media and maybe I'm in class or maybe I have some videos that I have to watch for my online class, either way. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of watching and I'm kind of taking notes, but otherwise I'm like, you know, not paying too much attention. But the real problem with that is that it's a very passive way to approach math. And I've always liked the quote that math is not a spectator sport. If you want to get good at math, you have to stay very active with it. And I realize it can be very hard to stay active and pay attention the whole time in a math class, which is why leveling up your notes is a very easy way to make it a more active process. So there's a couple tools that I recommend that you have for homework and note taking. So let's go through them. The first tool is actually just two notebooks. Very, very simple. But what I highly recommend is that you have one notebook dedicated to just taking notes and one notebook just dedicated to doing homework. Now, alternatively, you could also replace the lecture notebook with a binder where you also put all your quizzes and exams in and then you have all of your material in one place. A binder is also a great idea if you're doing something like guided notes for a class. I recommend having a separate homework notebook from your notes because it makes referencing your notes so much easier and wherever you can, you want to make your life easier in a math class. So this is a very simple thing that you can do. This will also prevent you from having to like dig out and try to find stuff because you've got homework and lecture notes all mixed up together. Just keep them separate and it'll make your life a lot easier. The next tools that I suggest I think have become extremely underrated because I see so many students nowadays doing math and pen. Use a pencil and an eraser when you do your homework and when you take notes. If you are doing it right and you are really trying hard, you're probably going to make mistakes. It's part of the learning process and it's a very important part of the learning process. So why do math and pen? You're gonna end up having to scratch things out, you're gonna have to make things messy, and that's just not what the goal is. You wanna keep things as neat as possible. So do everything with a pencil. Also, I have noticed as a math student that I have always erased down to the edge of my eraser and I, I usually lose my eraser pretty quickly on in the semester. So go out and buy yourself an individual eraser. So this one is a little bit ridiculous, although I bet if you bought one that was this big, you'd be pretty covered for maybe your entire time in college or, or in high school. But yeah, get, get yourself one of those so that you just go in with the mentality of, I'm gonna make mistakes and then I'm gonna erase them and then I'm gonna fix them. Now, the last tool is probably the most fun one. Get yourself some colored pens or a set of colored highlighters so that when you are doing homework or when you are taking notes, you can start color coding things. So the reason that I recommend having a color system is this is really what's going to make taking notes a much more active process. If you know that you have a color coding system for your notes, you're going to pay attention a lot more in class. 
to make sure that you are kind of fulfilling what your system is, however you want to set it up. So when I was a student, I always made definitions green, theorems purple, I made, let's see, I think I made examples in blue. So I color coded all of these things and it made it so much easier for me to look through my notes at a later point. And it also really quickly changed the experience of being in class because now I had things that I was watching for and I really wanted to make nice notes. You also want to use this, a similar system when you're doing your homework. Do your homework in order and label all the pages so that you can easily tell what you are working on. And then you can use a color coding system as a way to kind of classify what you understood, what you struggled with, and what you didn't understand at all. And keeping a simple record of that as you're going through your homework is going to make you much more organized when it comes time for the exam. My second tip is to be very mindful about your time when you're doing your homework. This sounds very generic, but first let's just think about what is the point of homework anyways? Well, the point of it is to really help you to dive into some of the things that you discussed in a lecture or in a video. And your goal should really be to understand it as well as you can in the period of time that you have. The better that you understand something, the easier you're gonna make it on yourself when it comes time for an exam to start studying for that exam. So there's really two parts to this tip. First, think about when you start your homework. Think about what it means if you start your homework two hours before the deadline. That really changes the goal of your homework. Like I said, the goal should really be to try to understand it very deeply. But if you start your homework two hours before the deadline, you have now created a new goal of, I just have to get this done. And that is a much more stressful goal. And your brain is just not going to be as receptive to understanding things and learning things. So if math is something that really stresses you out, this is extremely important for you actually, because if you just start things at the last minute, you are just gonna to continue to get stressed out with math. So very simple solutions to this problem if you always start two hours before the deadline. Consider just starting the night before at the same time. Then you've got a little bit more time to actually get through your work. And if there's anything that you're struggling with, you can go and ask questions. Now, the second part of this tip is really to also think about what time you're doing your homework at. So I think it's just kind of the norm for many students to be like, oh, I'll just start it tonight because it's due tonight and you know, it's three hours before the deadline. But not everybody actually works great late at night. And if you have homework due at like midnight or something, you might want to really consider if starting your homework that late is the best to maximize your understanding. So consider playing around with the time that you try doing your homework. Consider trying maybe in the morning or sometime in the afternoon. For me personally, I always found that I worked best anywhere from the early afternoon to the early evening. Those were kind of my windows where I could do my homework. And once I knew that, I had consistent times where I would sit down and work through it. And then I had a pretty consistent time where I knew I was gonna stop working for the day. So once again, this is all about just making math a better experience for you. And so if there are other times in the day where you have more mental energy, then you really wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of that, especially with something as hard as math. Okay guys, so those are really the two tips that I have. I am wondering what you guys think about this, so if you want to leave me a comment or leave other tips of your own, feel free. And if you have suggestions for me, I'm always listening. So thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next time.